Welcome to this introductory series of training videos for SolidCamp. This video's topic is the profile operation. So profile operation is the kind of operation you're gonna use when you wanna follow uh, a path exactly. Uh, it's really useful for things like a routering and uh, just simple uh, uh, linear cuts, arc cuts, really anything where you're not looking for a step over. Um, and we'll take a look at that when we open up the operation, but um, I wanna show you where we can get to the profile operation. So we can go to solid cam operations, under 2.5D, you can see there's profile there. You can go to the solid cam 2.5D tab, and you can see profile is over there. Or you can do it the old way, and you can right click on setup. Or in my case, I like to add it immediately after all these pocketing operations. I'll just right click on this last one here, add milling operation, and then there's profile. So profile you can use in a lot of different applications. You can use it for chamfering, you can use it for engraving, uh, even though there are separate toolpaths that do those that we'll cover in the rest of this introductory series. Profile is kind of like a catch-all kind of toolpath. It can do all the things you wanted to do. Literally, it just follows the geometry that you choose in the exact path you choose it. Uh, so let's take a look at it in terms of workflow. In terms of the operation manager, it is exactly the same as all our other toolpaths. They basically follow the same workflow. Geometry, tool, levels, technology. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna see the differences between this toolpath and the other ones in this introductory series. First is the geometry. In terms of geometry, you select geometry as chain geometry or contour geometry. Uh, what you see here is the same as what we covered in the pocket operation video. Uh, you're really just choosing chains right off the solid. So let's say I wanna do this, uh, this top face here. I wanna just kinda of skim the wall of this, this face here. I'm gonna click on this first edge, and then using up to entity, and then let's use a constant Z relationship. You can see that I clicked on up to entity first, and then constant Z. If I had constant Z alone, then it would have just chosen that entire top face. And for profile, I'm not looking to do that. Uh, I'm not, this is not a pocket. I'm not trying to do all these faces. I just wanna do the walls. I just wanna follow that exact contour there. So by turning on up to entity, I'm actually getting it to wait for me to choose the next entity in the selection. So there's a constant Z relationship across here. If I just click on this last one here, it finds that constant Z relationship for me. So that is a, a really good shortcut for choosing chains of the same plane. And I could do the same thing with tangent propagation as well. If there was some sort of tangent propagation, which there is here, uh, I could have just done the same thing. Uh, I just chose constant Z because I know this is on the same Z plane. So let's click on the green check mark to accept that geometry, and then we'll click on the green check mark to select all of that. Let's go to tool, and I'm gonna grab my quarter inch tool. Again, for creating milling tools, as you see on this list, I would refer you to the creating milling tools uh, introductory video in this series. Okay, and then my fees and speeds, of course, under my control, under the data tab, go to levels, and again, like we've seen in other tool paths like the face mill and the pocketing operation in this series, we have the ability to choose top of target, top of stock, or user defined. In this case, user defined, I'm gonna get it to just be set to this top face here. And then again, user defined, top of target, bottom of target, bottom of stock. In this case, I definitely don't wanna go past this face, so I'm just gonna click on that face there, getting that to be associative as well. So this tool path will always go from that face that face because of the way I, I clicked it here. Uh, that color coding indicates that associativity. If we go to technology, in the technology page uh, uh, section of this of this manager, uh, you'll see a lot of different options in here. And that is, again, because the profile toolpath can do many different things. Uh, you're really just telling it to follow a particular path, but that could apply to chamfering, engraving. This could be some sort of um, unique cut where we're trying to get it to follow a chain, but maybe not necessarily in a climb milling direction. If you notice, I chose the chain going that direction. So if I say tool side left, I'm telling it to be on this side of the arrow. But let's say my, my geometry, the only thing I have available to me is on the opposite side or for whatever reason I'm choosing geometry in a different direction and I'd like the tool to be on the right side. Maybe I'm looking for a conventional cut or maybe there's something about this tool where on the right side it actually makes sense for the application that I'm trying to machine here. Or maybe the geometry I have is the center line and I'd like to just follow down the center line. In this case though, I'm doing climb milling. I'll leave it at tool side left. I can turn on a compensation now it says compensation on finish passes, but that's only because I have the finish box checked. This toolpath can do, can do basically rough and finish. So if I turn on the rough, 
and it opens up the compensation on rough. And that gives me independent step down for the rough and for the finish in the case of either one. Um, and like we saw in the pocket operation video, there's also an equal step down. So if the step down, if the depth of this pocket here is not equally divisible by my step down, I can just say equal step down and it equalizes the pressure on the tool. It equalizes those depths of cut. As Soon as I check the box for rough, it opened up the wall offset and the floor offset. Let's set that to 5,000 as well. Basically, you can toggle on and off the different uh, items that you're looking to do here. So in this case, if I turn off finish, I'm only doing roughing. If I turn off rough, I'm only doing finishing. Uh, with the finishing, you get the call out for the number of passes. So if there was a need for a spring pass, you can change that to a two. You can put that at, at any number you want, really. The overlap is more for when that you're selecting a continuous tool, a uh, continuous contour, which we'll look at when I do the outside. And then step down, obviously, like I mentioned, that is just the step down for your tool. So let's just do this one here with some simple geometry here. I'm gonna just jump ahead to the link section. You can see that we can add a lead in and lead out of various types. I'm just gonna do a lead in value of 20 thou, and I'm just gonna make that the same at the end. So pretty simple. I just told it to come in there, go across and leave. I didn't really give it any step down. So we can go to the technology section and let's just give it a step down of 100 thou. That way we can see multiple lines. Now let's say I, I'm looking at this and I don't exactly want to start right on the end of that chain. Maybe there's some material there. I want to kind of feather that out a little bit. In the technology section, there's a geometry button which allows me to modify my geometry. So inside SolidCam, you have the ability to add sketches, but you don't necessarily need to sketch. There's always an ability in the operation to modify something about the chain or the movement of the tool or whatever it is you need. So always look for those options first before you consider sketching. Uh, for instance, here, I want to extend this a little bit out. So I'm gonna go to the extension start, and let's say we just extend that by 100 thou. So you can see that red circle that represents the diameter of the tool has moved out. Let's do it for the end. So I'll do the same thing here. So what that does is it tells SolidCam that we're extending that line. So my lead in is going to still be applied there, but it's gonna be applied to that extended area there. See now the chain has moved out a little bit. This geometry section also gives us the ability to work with things like uh, the offset. So this is not a wall and floor offset like we have here. What this is here is leaving material behind from what we've defined as the geometry. So in this case, wall offset of 5 thou, I'm actually saying from that chain that I selected, leave 5 thou on that wall. What I'm doing in this geometry section though, is I'm saying what that wall actually is. So if I put in a 5 thou here, I'm actually, actually saying that the offset, let me just put a larger number in there. Let's put 10 thou in there so we can actually see it. And I'll get a top view of that. So what I've actually told SolidCam is the actual geometry that we're machining to, the final face, is now 10 thou offset from that original face. So any, any rough passes I add are gonna be on top of that. So really this is just a modification of the geometry. Let's say I wanted to overcut by 20 thou. By putting a negative number, I'm actually overcutting that wall. I'm telling SolidCam that this is the, actually the new wall here. So what this is for is to just avoid having to do any kind of sketching. If I don't have the true wall that I'm looking for here, maybe this is not a finished face, uh, maybe this is the finished face, but I'm looking to add some coat or something like that, for whatever reason, you need to add some sort of an offset. This allows you to modify the geometry so that you can apply your roughing passes on top of that. Let's get out here. Actually, before we get too far out of here, let me make sure we have everything set here. Perfect. Just save and calculate. And then we have our toolpath. Now let's say I actually did want to finish this floor and I want to step over with my profile toolpath. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to click on clear offset. And what clear offset is going to ask me is how much material I'd like to travel across. So you can see as indicated by that icon, in the bottom left corner, that's how much material I have to cross, and then here's my step over across that material. So I'm just gonna click on the button that says offset, and I'll click on the most amount of material away from my chain, possibly right there. So by freehanding, selecting that point, I'm really just kind of recording the coordinates of that. It's really just looking at a perpendicular distance. So it's saying that's about 
just under 77.77 of an inch away from there. So that's kind of like a, a normal offset. And then let's say we do a 100,000 step over across that. So what we actually see is I'm doing the floor in those 100,000 steps. What it's actually doing though is it's offsetting exactly from that chain. So you can see the more I offset, the more the, the chain tends to kind of collapse on itself. That arc is becoming a straight corner, and then it just becomes this movement here. But that straight offset from this line right here is actually starting to cut air. So if I were looking to do that bottom pocket, I probably wouldn't use profile. Profile is following that line exactly. So if that chain was actually offset on the material, off, offset on the part, I might use clear offset. But with this unique looking shape, I would switch to pocket. So I would review, to, I would uh, refer you to pocket in terms of the introductory video so you can see how you can do open edges and get your pocket chain geometry. So here, let's say we're just doing the wall like that. Now, I'd like to show you the other options in here, but they're uh, a little more applicable for when you have a closed chain. So I'm going to do the outside of the part. I'm just going to do a save and copy. So we can use the same tool, the same fees and speeds. I'm just going to change the geometry. This time, I'm just going to turn on constant Z right away. So I can just grab that outside edge. So we're going to do the outside perimeter of the part. And you can see I chose the chain on more on this side than that side of the line, only because when you choose on the side of a line, the cutting direction goes in the opposite direction. So if I chose on this side of that line, the cutting direction goes this way. If I chose it incorrectly and I'd like to reverse it, I can always come over to chain list, right click, and reverse. But I like that direction. So tools the same, levels. Let's just say we go from the top of the target, because I've already faced it previously, in the facing face mill operation, which was covered in a previous introductory video. And I'd like to go to the bottom of the target as well. So let's go bottom of the target. So I didn't have to select anything from the solid. I can do top of target, bottom of the target. And then from the bottom of the target, I'd like to go an additional, let's say 20,000. So in the delta box, that's an incremental amount from whatever we've selected here. In technology, we'll leave the compensation on. Tool side left, we're going to do a finishing with 100 thou. And let's just generate that toolpath and see what that looks like. So a couple things here. I don't actually like where it starts right on that line, right on that dot there. So I'd like to move that start point. So what I'll do is I'll go to geometry. And now that I have a closed chain, I can move the position, the start position, either by the whole chain or from that first edge. You can see that it's, it's defaulted to 25% of that first edge. So from that edge, 25% of that overall length, it's shifted. Probably want to start right dead center. So I'm going to put that at 50. You can see that it moved it to the center of that original line. Or I could just highlight that. I should be able to click on the part and it finds what that represents there. So if that's about 77%, that's what I've done there. But I actually want that at 50. So let's put that at 50. If I'm starting in the center of a wall, definitely we'll have some sort of witness line for my, my uh, lead in and lead out. Let me just increase that so we have something we can see. So I'll go over to my extension slash overlap and let's make that an overlap of 50 thou. So if I do a save and calculate on that now, we'll see that we started a little bit before that point and we ended a little bit after that point with each lap. So that is our overlap right there of 50 thou. Essentially, I started. 25 thou before, and I ended 25 thou after to eliminate the witness line. But this being a closed chain, there really is no need for me to do one lap and then feed down and do another lap. I could keep the tool in constant contact because this is one continuous chain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to depth type, and we'll change this to helical. Now, helical is not exactly a helix. You can see here, all you're really telling it is to do from the top down or bottom up, and then to generate a, a, a flat lap at, uh, at the end or at the beginning. Um, so helical really just refers to the fact that there is a progression in the z-axis that's helical. This is essentially your step down. With each lap around the chain, with each completion of the chain, it'll step down in z by that amount. 
What this will actually achieve, though, is it'll keep the tool in constant contact. So that constant Z-force makes this finishing operation a lot more accurate because there's constant contact. And it eliminates the need for these retraction motions, which should reduce the cycle time as well. So when I do a save and calculate, we'll see now that we have one entry and one exit with constant contact with the material. So that should really help out with finishing the perimeter of a part. Or anytime you have a closed chain, really, there's, there's probably no need to leave the part. You can just do that one entry and that one exit. Now let's say I wanted to do some chamfering. Let me just add another profile. I'm going to reuse that last chain, so my contour 4, because that represents the top edge of the part, and that's probably where I want to chamfer. So I'm just going to do that one real quick. Under Tool, I'll just go Select. Okay, and let's actually just choose my chamfer mill. So this being a profile operation, it'll work the same way. I'm basically just going to say from the top of the target to that same face. Now, there is no chamfer on here. So I'm actually just going to tell it to use a chamfer of, let's say, 20,000. So from there, I may, maybe I'll just make a 20,000 chamfer. Now, if I did have an actual chamfered edge on this part, as my chain geometry, I would use the bottom edge of the chamfer because the chamfer is essentially a type of surface. So I'm going to choose the bottom edge of that chamfered surface as my contour. That way I don't even have to put a depth because it's already at the depth that I'd like it to go. Under technology, we'll do tool side left. We'll do finishing because there really is no need for anything other than finishing for a chamfer. And then I'll just have my, my lead in lead out. What will make the profile toolpath a chamfering toolpath is down here in this rest material slash chamfer section here. Now, rest material we covered in the pocketing operation. So how it works in the pocketing works the same way here. So I would refer you to the pocketing operation for how rest material works. In profile, we'll go to chamfer. That opens up the second tab representing the chamfer. And all I'm really doing here is telling it where on my tool I'd like to use the, the, the tip of the tool. This represents the cutting diameter that I'm actually going to use. So instead of the tool being a three-quarter inch or a 3 8 inch tool, I'm actually going to tell it to be a 50 thou tool. It's going to take that 50 thou diameter wherever it falls on that, on that tool. So the tool dimensions are actually important here. And it's going to dip the tip of the tool and move it over so that that exact point right there that represents the 50 thou on that conical tip is going to follow that chain. And in our case, because I gave it a 20 thou depth, I'm actually going to create that 20 thou chamfer with this part of the tool. Let's just do a save and calculate. So you can see that the tool, the center of the tool, has been dropped down and shifted over. If we take a look at that from a side view, so I'm just going to do a host cat on this. So that is my 50 thou going into the part. So the 50 thou and the 20 thou down, that is going to form my 20 thou chamfer. If we do this in Solid Verify, we'll see that Solid Verification requires updated stock. So I'm just going to update my stock here real quick. And there is my 20 thou chamfer applied to my part. So like I said, if you had a chamfer actually designed on your part, I would choose the lower edge, and then that eliminates the need to add a profile depth. Depth is going to just be zero because you want to follow that line exactly. You'll let the chamfering option drop the tool and shift it over to form the chamfer. Uh, but in this case, I'm adding a chamfer to this solid. The solid did not currently already have a chamfer on it. I'm just breaking the edge. Uh, I'm doing it with a 20 thou just for the purposes of the video, but you could put in whatever depth you want to break the edge in any way you like, and then that forms the chamfer as intended. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2.
You can send us your questions and parts via the ticket system at allcampsupport.com. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this introductory series. Thanks for watching.